time for final thoughts. For almost a year, the leftist mainstream media has been obsessed with one thing, Russia, Russia, Russia. It's all we hear about. They say, no, they insist that the Trump campaign colluded with Putin to win this election. After all, there's no way all of their BS poll numbers and Hillary cheerleading could have been misguided, right? Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin had to have stolen this election from Hillary, right? Day after day, the fake news media has hammered the Russia conspiracy home until the real Russia story bubbled up to the surface. The Russia story they don't want to talk about. The Russia story that goes like this. As Mrs. Clinton was beginning her job as Obama's Secretary of State, federal agents stood by and watched as Russian influences massaged their way into the back pockets of Donald Trump? No. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. That's right. Let's talk about a little deal called Uranium One. The Obama administration, with Mrs. Clinton at the forefront, was knowingly compromising American national security interests. According to The Hill, the FBI, quote, obtained an eyewitness account backed by documents indicating Russian nuclear officials had routed millions of dollars to the U.S. designed to benefit former President Bill Clinton's charitable foundation. Yep, and that was, quoting again, during the time Secretary of State Hillary Clinton served on a government body that provided a favorable decision to Moscow, end quote. That deal would give control of 20% of U.S. uranium to Moscow by way of a mining company called Uranium One. Oh, and it gets better. The American businessman who cooperated with this investigation tried to file a lawsuit that might have exposed it all, but was threatened and silenced by the Obama administration. The real Russia story is a real doozy. Take one part Obama administration, mix in a whole lot of U.S. uranium, and top it off with some good old-fashioned Clinton pay-to-play, and you've got the Russia bombshell the mainstream media has been waiting for. But because it has nothing to do with Donald Trump and everything to do with crooked Hillary, President Obama, and his State Department, it's no surprise these leftist media cowards will barely touch it. What are you afraid of? I thought you were all about truth. I thought you were all about speaking truth to power. I thought you were fearless and noble and honest journalistic warriors. No. You so-called journalists walk around like your crap doesn't stink while you dedicate all of your time to harassing Sarah Sanders, reporting on overheard speaker phone calls, salacious dossiers, and late night tweets. You're not journalists. You're not truth-seeking warriors. You're pansies that are either too scared to challenge your leftist idols or too far up Hillary's pantsuit to see what's right in front of your faces. Here's your Russia scandal, and we, the American people, would appreciate it if you'd spend even a tenth amount of time on it as you do attacking our president. You think we trust you to hold government accountable when you can't even hold yourselves accountable? No. Check yourselves. Seek the truth and report it, even if it doesn't fit the destroy Trump narrative you're after. Those are my final thoughts from L.A. Got Clinton took control of the Democratic Party, and they basically run it with a few exceptions ever since. It's been a long time. Time. The society-wide backlash against sexual harassment by powerful producers, actors, and politicians has finally turned and bit the Clintons themselves. Just yesterday, Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, she's the one who filled Hillary Clinton's New York Senate seat when Hillary left it to become Secretary of State, said that Bill Clinton should have resigned during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. In response, Gillibrand was blasted by Hillary Clinton's longtime spokesman, Philippe Raines. He tweeted this, over 20 years, you took the Clinton's endorsements, money, and seat. Hypocrite. But moreover, Hillary Clinton just ran for president a year ago. She's married to the guy right. accused of rape, and she attacked the, she did, attacked the women who accused him of sex crimes, and she didn't do it in the 90s. She did it last year while running for president, and she's still denying it. So she wanted the most hey, powerful look. job in America, and she's attacking the women. So how does your theory work exactly? Tucker, you know, on the Clintons, I love them. I think that they, I think Bill was a great president. I think she would have been a great president. They are no longer going to be the leaders of the Democratic Party. That is very, very clear at I this agree. point. In about a year and a half, we'll pick a new nominee to run for president, and he or she will be the leader of the Democratic Party going forward until they're not president or until they lose the president. Yep. Three things. Bill should have resigned. Thank God Hillary Clinton is not president now. And this is the end of the Clinton era. Now, in an interview at the Miami Book Fair with Republican strategist and political commentator Anna Navarro, Donna Brazil, she called Bill Clinton's accusers courageous. That was according to the Miami Herald who reported that fact. Quote, it was brave of them to come forward, she added. 
going public with their allegations, placed them in, quote, the middle of a political circus. Now, Tucker Carlson, he asserted that with people such as Gilbrand and Brazil and left-wing columnists speaking out against the Clintons, their tenure ruling as the Demo of the Demo uh, their tenure ruling the Democrat Party is now over. A new leader of the Democrat Party will emerge when the party selects its next presidential nominee. So what are your thoughts? Is are these new allegations against Bill Clinton? Is this the end? Do you do you agree with Tucker Carlson? Well I certainly all right, breaking news tonight about high-profile mainstream media journalists who are being accused of sexual misconduct. CBS News has now suspended Lion of the Liberal Media anchor Charlie Rose, and PBS is now stopping production and distribution of his show following a report in the Washington Post. Now, according to the Post tonight, eight women are accusing Rose of inappropriate sexual behavior, including by making unwanted sexual advances, lewd phone calls, being naked in front of them, and groping them. In a statement to the Post, Rose admitted wrongdoing. He apologized for his actions and he said that he thought he was pursuing shared feelings. Then there is New York Times reporter Glenn Thrush. He has also been suspended tonight over a Vox.com report where several women are accusing him of sexual misconduct. Now that includes unwanted sexual contact and kissing. Thrush has apologized also in a statement. We're going to continue to follow both these stories tonight. But the developing situation with Senator Al Franken and the latest comments from Hillary Clinton, it is now exposing a massive problem with the liberal mainstream media in America. Because for decades, the media has been feigning moral outrage when it comes to allegations against Republicans while defending year in and year out those Democrats who have been accused of doing far worse, a massive double standard. And tonight, there is a new allegation against Franken. A second woman is now accusing Democratic Senator Al Franken of sexual misconduct. The woman is alleging that during a 2010 state fair in Minnesota, Senator Franken grabbed her behind while the two were posing for a picture. The woman also posted the picture on Facebook and later responded to a comment about this, writing, quote, Al Franken totally molested me, creeper. Now, keep in mind, this is two years into Franken's first term as a U.S. senator. Now, Senator Franken is responding to the latest allegations by saying, well, he takes thousands of pictures with people. He doesn't remember this specific incident. And Senator Groper added that he feels badly that the woman felt disrespected by their interaction. Now, we did reach out to Senator Franken for a statement, but his office shockingly refuses to get back to us. Unfortunately, none of this should really be all that surprising. This is the same guy who made jokes, nobody else in the media will talk about it, about drugging and raping women. Joke? Who does this? And last week, Franken was accused of sexual misconduct by radio host Leanne Tweeden. And Tweeden revealed explosive information about Senator Franken last week, according to her, during a 2006 USO tour. Franken forcibly kissed her while supposedly rehearsing a skit backstage. There's also this photo of Franken groping Tweeden while she was asleep on a flight. Now, Leanne Tweeden says she didn't even know that happened until after she got home and started looking through pictures of that trip. Franken did issue an apology, but claims he doesn't remember the kissing incident backstage. Senator Franken is also being accused of harassing yet another woman, Melanie Morgan, radio TV personality, co-founder of the website Media Equalizer. She's accusing Franken of harassing her on the phone. This allegedly happened after they got into an on-air argument during an appearance on Bill Maher's old show, Politically Incorrect, back in 2000. And Melanie Morgan says she had to threaten to call the police to get Franken to stop, which he did. Now, despite all of that, some members of the media, well, they're making excuses for Al Franken even tonight. Take a look. There's a new report that Senator Al Franken grabbed a, women, a woman's behind at a fair back in 2010. He says he doesn't remember doing it. We're going to start to go after everyone in every power industry for something like a butt slap. I'm worried that there's going to be no one left running anything. Yeah, that may be true. To ask him to resign, I don't know if that's the appropriate response either. I mean, no senator has been asked to resign ever. We've also, I think, unfortunately, slowly slid culturally into, the, into a moment when forgiveness 
is now married to ideology. Mm -hmm. If you're a conservative, and you know, Bill Clinton, you know, or Al Franken, get him out or get her. Right. He photo took a picture, uh, which his office now says was a joke, uh, that showed him uh, potentially not actually groping, but mock groping her. She also published a picture uh, that was given to her of her asleep with Senator Franken, uh, mock groping her. Excuse me, in the case of Leanne Tweeden, there's the evidence. It's all there. Franken's not even denying it. It just shows how low the mainstream media, Democrats, are willing to go to defend people that suit their ideology, like Franken. And what the mainstream media won't tell you is that Franken has been sick and twisted for years. For example, he was on Saturday Night Live, 1995. He suggested a skit about drugging and raping Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes. He said, quote, well, I give the pills to Leslie Stahl. Then when Leslie's passed out, I take her to the closet and rape her. Or that's why you never see Leslie until February. When she passes out, I put her in various positions and take pictures of her. It's creepy. It's supposed to be funny. And in 2000, Franken, he wrote a satirical article for Playboy magazine, the headline, Pornorama. The vast majority of what Franken wrote, we can't even repeat on TV, but in one part, Franken wrote, quote, I'm talking, of course, about the Internet, which is a terrific learning tool. For example, a couple of years ago, when he was 12, my son, he used the Internet for a sixth grade report on bestiality. Then in 2008, when Franken was running for the Senate, he actually apologized for the comments we just showed you. But it turns out Franken was lying. How do we know? Because in his new book, Franken says he faked the apologies in order to win votes. He writes, quote, to say I was sorry for writing a joke was to sell out my career, to sell out who I'd been my entire life. And I wasn't sorry what I had written Pornorama or pitched that stupid Leslie Stahl joke at two in the morning. I was just doing my job. Oh, his apologies aren't real. Then there's the Clintons. Now. For those of you in the mainstream media, pay attention. Why is this important? Because for 30 years, 30 Democrats on behalf of the Clintons have smeared, slandered, besmirched, victim shamed anyone and everyone who dared to tell what turned out to be the truth about Bill Clinton. And the media has always been their willing accomplices in and out this. They have been complicit up to and including through last year. The only reason now some in the political world are finally to starting to acknowledge what Clinton did is because Bill and Hillary Clinton are no longer important. So now that it's politically expedient, how that they can't hurt them, the Clintons that is, oh, well, members of the media, even some, but only some, are only beginning to start to call out the deplorable behavior. So it's not about principle for them. It's about, well, from 1991 until 2016, the media defends the Clintons on everything, regardless of how damaging or disgraceful the allegations were. And, well, they can do it now. They can say, well, maybe it wasn't right, but I believe Juanita. Okay, well, Hillary Clinton continues to smear, slander, besmirch her husband's accuser today. Just take a listen to the latest attack by Hillary. Look, I think every situation has to be judged on its own merit. I think it's unfortunate that uh, people are uh, either misremembering or misinterpreting history. Really? Every one of those woman, women, they're misremembering Hillary? Well, what happened to believing, as Hillary told us in an election year, women, when they do come forward, remember this. Today, I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed, and we're with you. Right to be believed, you're with them? Does Hillary Clinton really think that the women who have accused her husband of sexual misconduct and even rape, that are, they're actually misremembering what Bill did to them? Hillary herself orchestrated a campaign to discredit and destroy all of them. And here's what the media said about the Clinton's accusers just last year during the election. Take a look. The rape accusation is decades old and discredited. Only in the uh, sort of the mind of some sort of movie writer of a third world uh, democracy if, or dictatorship would you have a candidate per publicly humiliate a former occupant of that office by parading all of uh, all of these other people around as well. It's Hillary Clinton who is the candidate here, not Bill Clinton. She was not implicated in any misconduct. She was not someone who uh, was accused even of doing anything untoward with regard to these women. 
pretty despicable. Now fast forward one year, 2017. Despite this come to Jesus moment from some on the left, well, some are still today Clinton sympathizers in the press and the Democratic Party. They'll never give it up. Watch this. He more than paid the price for what, uh, what he did. The mere fact that he went through an impeachment process as president uh, means that uh, there will always be a shadow on the legacy of his presidency. So at least from my point of view, I think he's more than paid the price. He didn't get away with anything. Okay? He was investigated, he it was litigated, he was impeached. He had finally, after lying about the affair, admitted it, apologized multiple times in a very heartfelt way. That's one of the many yes, allegations all, all against of those him. Allegations Paula were, Jones, there's yes. Jennifer Flowers, there's one Andy Broderick, right. there's Kathleen Willey, there's a bunch. All of which were investigated, litigated, adjudicated. Oh, we got a new left-wing talking point that Bill Clinton paid the price for his sins. Now, the Clintons treated Bill's accusers horribly, systematically, did everything they could do to publicly shame them and smear them and slander them. In 92, during the presidential primaries, Jennifer Flowers revealed she had a 12-year affair with Bill Clinton. The Clinton campaign, remember, they had a war room, bimbo eruptions. They sprung into action, all to attack Flowers. And then Bill and Hillary, they show up on 60 Minutes. They deny the charges. And when after Flowers' character. And the media, they never took it seriously. How do we know? Take a look at this clip from the documentary, The War Room. It shows how the press, the liberal media in this country, actually reacted to a question during that Flowers press conference. Watch them laugh. Did the governor at any time tell you on the telephone to just tell the truth about what He told me to just deny it. The governor could use a condom? Jesus. Right here. Right here. Right here. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to put this to a stop if there are any further questions that are degrading, in my opinion, like that. That's the media laughing. What did they find so funny? Now, to further smear flowers, Hillary told Vanity Fair the following. Well, if we've been in front of a jury, I'd say, Miss Flowers, isn't it true? You were asked by the AP in June of 1990, and you said no. Weren't you asked by the Arkansas Democrat, and you said no? I mean, I would crucify her. Really, Hillary? Crucify her? What happened to believing her? Women have a right to be believed. Then in Carl Bernstein's book about Hillary's, well, he writes that Clinton would refer to Jennifer Flowers as trailer trash. Bill Clinton later admitted to having a sexual relationship with Flowers, and he admitted it only when he was under oath. Next up, Paula Jones. She accused Bill Clinton of exposing himself in a hotel room, and after filing a lawsuit against him, well, Clinton ended up paying Jones $850,000 with an out-of-court settlement. And in a related case, Clinton lost his law license in Arkansas for five years. The Clinton machine also went vicious after Jones, according to the New York Times and fake news CNN and other outlets. Longtime Clinton ally, CNN pundit for a while, James Carville, remember, infam infamously said this about Jones. If you drag a hundred dollar bill through a trailer park, you never know what you'll find. And Carville also slammed Jones by saying the, she only sued Clinton because of money. Then, of course, there's Monica Lewinsky, the White House intern that had an affair with Bill Clinton. And just like the other accusers, well, Hillary had a nasty nickname for Lewinsky. According to a journal entry that was made public, Hillary's friend, Diane Blair, said Hillary called Lewinsky a, quote, narcissistic looney tune. Then you have Kathleen Willey. She accused Bill Clinton in the Oval Office of gro gro groping and grabbing and fondling and touching and kissing her all against her will while she was a volunteer at the White House. Will, Willie later said that Hillary enabled her husband's predatory behavior. And of course, we can't forget Juanita Broderick. She alleged that Bill Clinton raped her in 1978. Broderick also describes an encounter where Hillary tried to silence her. Well, that's who the Clintons are, who they've always been. What they did to these women is reprehensible. Clinton's 1992 presidential campaign came up with the term bimbo eruptions to describe the women who came forward and made accusations against Bill. Now, George Stephanopoulos wrote in his memoir that in 91, Hillary said, quote, we have to destroy her when describing one of Bill's accusers. And speaking of George, well, watch how he handled one person who threatened to leak information about Bill Clinton to the press. Watch this.
What is names and addresses? I can send you a fax with names, addresses, phone numbers of, of who you had an affair with. It wouldn't make it true. It is completely <laughs> If you went on the radio and said that Bill Clinton is uh, the father of an illegitimate black child, you would be laughed at. People would think you're crazy. I guarantee you that if you do this, you'll never work in democratic politics again. Maybe you don't want to. I'm not saying it matters. You will be embarrassed before the National Press Corps. People will think nobody will believe you, and people will think you're scummy. That the alternative is you don't do it. It causes you some temporary pain with people who tomorrow aren't going to matter, and you have a campaign that understands that in a difficult time you did something right. Um, and you know that's important. I mean, it doesn't mean anything, or we can't do anything for you specifically, or anything like that. But you, uh, you know that you did the right thing. Yeah. Good morning, America. You'll never work again. You'll be embarrassed. And blah blah blah. This is who the Clintons are. This is who they've been for 30 years. They're allies in the Democratic Party. They're friends in the media. They knew it. They did everything they could to cover it up and completely trash Bill's accusers, up to and including last year's election. Is that inexcusable? The media also never reported that Hillary and her family foundation, I talked about it a lot last year, took tens of millions of dollars from countries that abuse women, kill gays and lesbians, persecute Christians and Jews, which is horrible. She took all that money. The Clintons literally, by taking it, endorsed that repressive behavior. They bought her silence. And the media, of course, all last year, they gave him a free pass. Now, so while it's nice to see that some on the left and in the media well, now that the Clintons have no power, only starting to admit how horrible the Clintons were to Bill's accusers, I argue.